What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for yet another Tottenham update. A few bits and pieces to get into today. And let's start off with probably the biggest story of the day, and that is about Richarlison. Our brand new signing, Richarlison, hasn't even reached Hotspur Way yet, and he's already been slapped with a one-game ban. Uh, there's been official confirmation as well, and it, the statement reads as an independent regulatory commission has suspended Richarlison for one match ban and fined him £25,000 following a breach of FA Rule E3 that took place during a Premier League game on Sunday, the 1st of May 2022. Uh, that was obviously the game against Chelsea when he uh, took the flare and chucked it back into the crowd. And now he will miss the Southampton game at home, the first game of the season. So <laughs> already been slapped with a ban. Yeah, it's a shame um, because obviously on the on the opening day of the season you want to see your star signing you know uh, in action but that isn't going to be the case unfortunately um, he's going to be at Stamford Bridge how fitting yeah, is bring it because sure the ban that. he got was against Chelsea and exactly. the first game is going to be against Chelsea I'm sure, so. I'm sure he'll love that I think it's probably right I mean if someone would have got injured like you know what I mean he would have that wouldn't have been good and mm. he did definitely um, put that uh, we could get, he, that was a chance what he did he would have should have just thrown it to the side or something he didn't have to throw it back in the crowd he probably would have got away with it um, but it does show that he's a bit like he did it just shows his passion and like he's willing to uh, engage with the crowd and stuff like that. He's always doing stuff like that, Richarlison. And um, yeah, uh, it's a shame that he's going to be banned for the opening game of the season, but it's only one game. Nothing, yeah. nothing too bad about it. Um, and it was definitely the case of throwing it back because if you remember the Norwich game, I can't remember which, but I think it was Emerson that picked up the flare that one of the Spurs fans threw and he yeah. didn't throw it away. He just put it to the side. He like li hit it up, like lifted it up like that and then just put it to the side and obviously he's not going to get in trouble yeah. for that. So. so. There you go. Um, so I think he'll learn from it, but I don't think he should st like he should um, stop being himself just because of oh, like, no. being a ban. You know what I mean? Because sometimes people, uh, you know, he'll get criticism. Oh, you have to um, kind of hold hold back and things like that. But that was a moment where he just let completely let go. Maybe he cost him a bit. It cost him a game and a fine. But um, hopefully uh, he doesn't stop being himself. Yeah, absolutely. Just be yourself, but be your smarter self. <laughs> um, next, uh, we're going to still speak about Richarlison. As Ali Gold says that Richarlison is expected to join with the squad later this week after flying back to the UK following his holiday in Brazil. Uh, but first, he's going to say his goodbyes to those at Everton, um, which is most likely be today because Sky Sports and Lyle from Sky Sports says that Richarlison will arrive at Hotspur Way tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to seeing um, all the media stuff that come with him holding the shirt and seeing him link up with his teammates as well. You know, it reminds me from remember that whole week um, when um, it was that following up the whole John Terry and Wayne Bridge, how will they handshake <laughs> or not handshake? It reminds me of that. All eyes will be on him and Romero. Will they hug? Will they say hi? What will happen? Um, I'm looking forward. I, if the club don't make a thing of that, then they're, miss, they they're missing a trip. I hope they, they do. I don't know if they make a thing, but like at least show them interacting and stuff like that and them saying hi to each other. Um, I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, hopefully, because he hasn't, uh, obviously he's been away, so um, we haven't got to get all the... Uh, uh, social media stuff out so that'll be, that's exciting for tomorrow um, and um, look I think he's going to be a proper character around the, around the, st uh, the squad as well so uh, I think he's going to I think all the, all the players are going to embrace him I think we've got a good group of players as well mm. at Tottenham like they're going to welcome him in and I'm, sh look, I'm looking forward to it looking forward yeah, and should, should ruffle some feathers as well yeah definitely and you saw um, the footage from when South Korea played Brazil um, earlier in the summer mm -hmm. and after the game Sonny was just sitting in the Brazil changing rooms with Richarlison do you reckon there was anything in it back then Definitely, I reckon. I don't think he would, that that's the reason, but I definitely, uh, there must be some. I reckon someone's like, "Come to Spurs, man. We we could do with you here." Hundred <laughs> percent. That conversation was had. I'm sure of it. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Let's talk about Clement Longley now. As Romano uh, said yesterday, that Longley to Tottenham just a matter of time. Uh, here we go soon. Agreement being finalised between Barcelona and Tottenham on a loan deal. Working on the details, Longley agreed personal terms with Spurs last week. A matter of the final steps between the clubs, and I imagine uh, we're going to hear a lot more about this later on in the day and potentially tomorrow as well yeah well they will definitely happen before the end of the week you have to imagine with uh, with spurs going off to south korea so yeah it looks like it's just a matter of time but before it's confirmed it is we thought we'll probably be confirmed by now but you know how Tottenham, as we do like, with every deal <laughs> you know how long Tottenham like to concentrate on the finer details but um 
I'm sure this one as well, because it's a loan with an option to buy and how much of the wages we pay and what the loan fee is. I'm sure there's all these little nitty, nitty gritty details mm. to uh, uh, iron out. Do you reckon um, if, if, the buy, if the buy option is fairly cheap, like even though we could be looking at you know, Gavardio and Bastoni in a year's time, there is still a chance we could sign up permanently if he does well? Oh, definitely. I think it all depends on how well he does and how well Conte thinks he's doing. But I definitely think there's um, a massive chance of that. They were talking about a buy option for really for really low. So yeah. I think that if that's the case, I mean, Daniel Levy won't be able to uh, contain himself. Definitely not. He's like... 60 million for Bastoni or 6, six million? million. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you have to get in contend with Lengley, mate. You, but, you know, we're, we're hearing that Lengley can play um, on the left and the centre. So yeah. we could still keep him as maybe competition for Eric Dyer as well and then bring in a Gavardiol as well. Yeah, I'd like to think so. So uh, that's definitely an option. But that uh, looks like Romano says, here we go soon. So he will be holding the shirt up uh, sooner rather than later, in my opinion. Next up, we're going to be talking about Steven Bergvine and Mike from the Telegraph out in Holland is saying that Tottenham and Ajax reached a £25.8 million fee for Steven Bergvine. However, the deal is reportedly being held back by Daniel Levy over additional requirements in the agreement, such as number of instalments and percentage of the next sale. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, shocking. Um, you know, uh, it's classic Levy. Uh, what, what can we say? He's uh, <laughs> Any deal he's involved in, <laughs> So, like we were saying yesterday, to be fair, weren't we? It's like if someone is offering more, I am surprised that we're willing to yeah. uh, that we're uh, willing to accept the lower offer. So all of a sudden now there's there's hiccups in terms of how much we're getting and how much is going what to the agent and all this kind of stuff. Um, doesn't surprise me, but I'm sure, I, I do believe we'll probably get done. But as well, I'm sorry if Ajax are are demanding 80 million for Anthony, even if euros, 80 million euros for Anthony. Surely Bergwijn is worth a lot more than 25 million. I think he is worth. Yeah, I don't know. I think he is worth at the moment, probably between thirty and thirty-five. That would be a fair deal, I think, right now. I think an under thirty, slightly undervalued. Yeah, you're getting probably getting a, a, a decent price for him. Mm. Although I don't, I don't think it's like a crazy decent price, but I think it's probably a decent price. So I think we could get a bit more for him, but I don't know. He's. I think he's just part. He's Bergvine's part with us for so long. It's fair to give him a chance to. And go where he wants to go because I don't think he's been treated that well uh, mm. in terms of playing time and stuff. He's probably deserved a lot more at Tottenham. Yeah. So it is what it is. But hopefully this one, this one again, dragging so long. Hopefully it just gets done soon. This one's been dragging since last January. Literally, literally <laughs> six months of uh, negotiating. I think we just need to move on from it. Yeah, I agree. Next up, we're going to be talking about Agent Sessegnon. And as you can see on your screens, Jed Spence put up a post on Instagram saying, uh, just looking at his season and saying unforgettable memories. And Sessegnon comments uh, saying, you know what to do now. And what do you think he's alluding to exactly? Definitely sign that contract, <laughs> Jed. I don't think it's up to Jed, to be honest, uh, <laughs> knowing that. But um, it seems this one is getting very, very close as well. Michael Bridge um, was on, apparently on Give Me Sport and he said, Spence um, has wanted to join Tottenham for a while now it was just down to Daniel Levy and Steve Gibson negotiating Steve Gibson wanted a lot more than Tottenham offering but they've come to a resolution now so that seems pretty final mm. um, from him so it seems like this one as well seems to be coming to an end finally although we've heard it many times with this deal oh, I was 48 hours away this week we're going to hear something and it keeps dragging and dragging so hopefully the final details will get sorted out before the pre-season tour and we will get him through the door yeah having said that though um, a couple of years back we did have Michael Bridge on the channel yeah <laughs> and he said yeah <laughs> that was the summer we signed nobody yeah <laughs> he's like Grealish is coming this one's coming that one's coming <laughs> yeah it didn't quite happen that day <laughs> who knows and th there's there are these deals that yeah, this reminds me of the Tommy Arsu deal like last season where every yeah. day we were hearing it's going to happen, yeah. it's going to happen, it's going to happen, it's going to happen and it never happened. Um, hopefully it doesn't turn out the same way um, but because oh, we need him. Yeah, and on the other side of that, we're not really being linked with any other um, right backs no. or no serious links anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so. But something could happen completely out of the blue like a Bissouma or something like that. So I think the Spence deal will happen this week. I genuinely believe that but in terms of the price being banded about 15 to 20 million, um, it's a fair price, isn't it? And I mean, like for someone, I know he hasn't had Premier League experience and he's only been like championship and only one season at top level in the championship. But 15, you just got to snap your hands off of that, surely. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think that uh, that 
it's he's a good he's a good age it's um this in this day and age 15 to 15 million with plus add-ons isn't really that much and he could be a very like let's be honest if he if he is as good as we think he is then he's going to play a major role next season so for 15 20 million to up to potentially upgrade in your right wing back position it's a no-brainer if you think he's gonna be better than what you have so it makes complete sense yeah and if you believe in a player you just go and get it done look at liverpool they just brought in um a wing back from i don't know the lower leagues or the scottish league i can't remember yeah. who calvin ramsey or whatever yeah. his name is they wanted him they just got it done and that's the way we should be acting just get it done if we want him through the door you know that's not how levy uh, operates <laughs> yeah as soon as he heard he was involved in the deal i was like oh god here yeah. we go yeah uh, next up, we've got a rumour from Ryan Taylor on Salzburg striker Benjamin Sesko. And he says Tottenham are one of the clubs tracking the development of the supremely talented 19-year-old RB Salzburg striker Benjamin Sesko, who has been dubbed the next Erling Haaland in Austria. I mean, the links aren't exactly the most credible, but I mean, this guy has been spoken about. Uh, for the last year at least and they've got a bit of a conveyor belt don't they of talent out in uh, Salzburg so I for one would be very happy if we could get one of those uh, talents off the conveyor belt yeah they seem to have an amazing academy there don't they uh, with the amount of the unbelievable players you even think Sadio Mane came from there as well mm. um, way back when and then you know Haaland Adiemi, um you've got ba- Pats and Daka Minamino mm. um, they got uh, the guy from Wolves uh, Huang as well yeah. uh, he came from Salzburg it's um, but like unbelievable so this guy this kid is 18 years of age 19 uh, yeah 19 years of age now he scored uh, 10 goals last season in all competitions seems like he's also going to be a very good player so i think definitely one to keep an eye on i don't know if it's one we have to i mean look i think it's definitely one if you're planning for the future you get him in now maybe loan him out yeah uh, for that's what Salzburg, i'm thinking yeah. and then you have him um ready to come through uh so that's definitely one to keep your eye on potentially yeah and obviously they're a, they're a selling club as well so there's definitely a deal to be done there mm. uh probably for a fairly good price if we wanted it done um but last but not least sergio regulon ali gold has confirmed today that regulon returned to pre-season trailer earlier than expected last week to work on his fitness after picking up a groin problem at the end of last season mm. Um, it's interesting if he's still suffering from this groin tro- problem if it did happen at the end of last season. But um, I guess good on his um, attributes and good on his mental things to coming back to Spurs early and uh, getting to grips with things. He wants to be ready for the new season, wh- wh- wherever he's going to be. It sounds like he definitely um, uh, doesn't want the injury to be affecting him early into the season. Well, he was out for what What was his last game of the season? Because uh, L- uh, Session came in for the Liverpool game, didn't he? Uh, Played the last four games. Um, I don't was know he if not was... on the bench any of those games, Reglon? Because oh. I thought Session just had the shirt. No, I, I don't think so. I think Reglon was out, wasn't he? Let's I, don't know. I don't remember him uh, being available. Being no, you're right. Yeah, he was injured for the last five games of the yeah. season. Um, he was on the bench for the Brentford game. The last game he played was Brighton and Villa. Yeah. Uh, that was right. He played the filler game. Um, so, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see uh, what is going to happen with Reglon. There's a lot of rumours about him, whether Conte wants him around or not. Logic states that one of... I mean, probably he is the one. Probably um, we're going to uh, sell if uh, we need to sell one of him or Sessegnon. Um But you just never know in football what's around the corner. So, when you have a, a player uh, who's who I think is, is good in Reglon, um, you, you're never too... Uh, it's never guaranteed that he'll leave, but it looks quite likely at the moment. Um, but yeah, fair play to him. He, he's, he's got his attitude right, so uh, you've got to give credit for that. Yeah, and I think in terms of attitude, that's never been a problem with uh, Regulon, has it, in my no. opinion? I think he's always given his all, hasn't he, on mm-hmm. the pitch, off the pitch. He seems to be a very light character around as well. Um, but I guess it's all up to Conte and seeing what he decides and seeing what he wants for the future. Um, I, for one, I do think that he probably is going to leave this summer. And I think you can probably get a good fee for him. Um, very highly rated left back, especially um, out in Spain as well, where we had that stellar season for Sevilla winning the Europa League. So I think there'll be a lot of suitors for him in Spain. And you think as well, the money we're getting, if you're saying th- nearly between, you know, nearly 30 million for Bergwijn, if we do sell regular, it has to be between 25 and 30 minimum. Um, if, you're, if we're selling... Um, Le Celso and Ndombele, you're going to fetch a, something for them as well. Like, that's going to wipe... that. The, the, already one of those players is wiping out the fee for Basuma. And then all of a sudden you're eating into the fee we've paid for Richarlison, Richarlison already. Like, 
surely there's a lot of money for Spurs to have available if we want to even now go out and uh, splash even more cash or yeah. even after Jed spent and uh, Lengle who's going to be cheap Lengle and mm -hmm. Spence isn't exactly a massive outlay either so surely there's room for another big signing if we really want to yeah you got you got to assume that and I, I always thought that I mean with the 150 million that we had we were always going to be able to spend more than that with the money that was coming in I mean when we were doing our videos 150 million we saw that when we were trying to do that and we thought that was unrealistic yeah. getting so many out and so many in but even it's not. now even now even if we say we don't sell anyone we've only spent 60 plus 25 85 million yeah so and we put 100 million in from um from the 150 from, from the 150 already so like you have to imagine there's uh tottenham do have some money to spend this summer absolutely like uh, like even now after all the all the business we've already done absolutely um, so that is that. That's your Tottenham update for today. We'll be back today if any other news breaks. So thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, come, come on, you Spurs. Spurs.